verses 6 through verse 14. And King Rehoboam consulted with the old men that stood before Solomon, Solomon his father, while he yet lived, and said, How do you advise that I may answer this people? And they spake unto him, saying, If thou wilt be a servant unto the pe this people this day, and will serve them, and answer them, and speak good words to them, then they will be thou servant forever. But he forsook the counseling of the old men, which they had given him, and came and consulted with the young men that was grown up with him, and which stood before him. And he said unto them, What counsel give ye that I, that ye may, that we may answer this people who have spoken to me, saying, Make the yoke which thy father did put upon us lighter. And the young men that were grown up with him spake unto him, saying, Thus shalt thou speak unto the, this people. And spake and speak, spake unto thee, saying, Thy father made our yoke heavy, but make thou it lighter unto us. Thus shalt thou say unto them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father John's loins. And now, whereas my father did laid you with a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father hath chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scarpins. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day, and the king had appointed, saying, Come unto me again the third day. And the king answered the people roughly, and forsook the people, and forsook the old men counsel that they gave him, and spake to them after the counsel of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, and I will add to your yoke. My father also chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scarpins. Bow your head with me for a word of prayer. Dear God, I thank you that you, God, are who you say you are. Thank you, God, that you know everything, and God, you're everywhere, and you have all power. God, just for a few minutes, I'm asking, God, that you will let down that anointing, that yokes will be destroyed. Satan, I bind you now that you will not be able to catch the word before it enter into the hearts of these men and women. And Father, I set myself in agreement with you that your word is going forth, and I thank you, God, that it will not return void. This, Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you will touch every heart, unstop deaf ears. Let your word, God, penetrate into the hearts of these men and women that there will be a change in their life. And I give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. You may be seated. I give honor to Ella William and Ella Stokes, Ella Robbins and Robinson and to Dr. Brown and to Ella Leff and to all the deacons and to our first lady and co-pastor, Dr. Betty Jean Hardin and to all of you that are here, our missionaries. And I do praise God uh, for our visitor on today. And I want you to know that we thank God for you. You could have went any other place, but you're here. And we appreciate you being here with us on today, on this morning. I'm going to talk today from the subject, uh, who are you going to rely on? Look at somebody and ask them, so who are you going to rely on? Everybody have to rely on somebody. But who are you going to rely on? And I know that all of us have close friends and we have people that we call and we, ex we respect them and so forth. But who are we going to rely on? Now, I read you from uh, uh, the book of First uh, Kings, chapter 12 and verse 6 to 14. But let me give you, as Paul Harbour say, the background of this story, what had taken place. Solomon had served God and he served God the whole time that Solomon served God, there was no wars. It was a time of peace. He, was a, he served at a peaceful time. Solomon had so much of love, uh, the people showed to him. Uh, they came, even, you know, you read about Bathsheba came and brought him gifts. He just had, he was a multi-billionaire. He had more gold, more silver, more, more of anything than anybody, more knowledge than anybody. So Solomon was a, a unique person. Uh, he was outstanding. And uh, matter of fact, Solomon built more altars, a larger altar than any other king. He had more people serving him than any other king. But he also brought in more servants, and he had more required, and he made it hard on the people uh, because he'd taken their, made their children and had them as his servants. 
He did not withhold anything from his heart. All the arches he wanted, he got. All the land he wanted, he got. He built lakes and streams and everything. He lived a lavish life, an extraordinary life. Uh, but he went beyond that. He married 700 women and had 300 concubines. This is what the Bible said, if you would look at chapter 11 that in 1 King, you see this is what turned his heart from God. In chapter 11, uh, it says in verse 1, he said, But the king Solomon loved many strange women, many strange women, together with the daughters of Pharaoh's women of the Moabites, Moabites, the Amorites, the Edomites, the Zidonians, and the Hittites. All the nation, he loved those women. Now, and then it said in verse 7, and then did Solomon build a high place for Shermas, uh, for Chermas, and that was a god. And then he built also an abomination of Moites in the hills that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all of his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their god. And the Lord was angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned from the Lord, God of Israel and which had appeared unto him thrice, and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not do that which the Lord commanded. So God had given him an opportunity, told him, you shouldn't do that, Solomon. I'm not, I do not appreciate you having all of these strange women and all of these strange God. But he didn't stop there. Verse 27 says, and this was the cause that he lifted up his, ha his hand against the king. This is what happened. Now, God spoke to a young man by the name of uh, Rehoboam, I mean Jeroboam. And Jeroboam was one of Solomon's right-hand man. But when he saw that Solomon was doing all of this, Jeroboam went against him. <laughs> and so when Jeroboam went against Solomon, Solomon then wanted to kill Jeroboam. So Jeroboam had to flee. And so then when Solomon died, this is where our story comes in at, that when Solomon died, he had built all of these, uh, 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 high, these gods in high places. And these women, each one of the nationalities of his wife, sought their own god, and he had their god for them. And so the, then Solomon then died, and his son uh, came in in his stead. And his son, uh, where we have two names that are similar, we have uh, Rehoboam and we have Jeroboam. Rehoboam was Solomon's son, and Jeroboam was the son of Nabak. He, they was no kin, not kin to each other. But God had told uh, Jeroboam that he was going to give the kingdom to him, uh, a ten of the tribes to him, because of what Solomon had done. And, and Jeroboam, and Rehoboam, did not want that to happen. Of course, he didn't know it was going to happen. But what uh, 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 Rehoboam did was one of the most dangerous things that any leader could do. He went, instead of getting the advice and taking the advice of the old men that had been with Solomon and understood things, he rejected the old men knowledge. And he talked to them roughly. And he accepted the, the, the knowledge of the young men. Now, we have to know that young men are for war and they're strong, but they're not for advice. Now, if you want wisdom, you need to go to folks that know and been through it. And that's what the Bible said, the aged women do what? Teach the young women. You can't have young women teaching young women because they don't know what to do themselves. They're still struggling. Now, they're going to talk to me, but I know I'm telling the truth. They're still struggling. And so you need to talk to aged folks. Well, he heard the, 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 the old man said, listen, your father was hard on us. He worked us too hard. And, and he took our families. He divided us. And he did this and he did that. If you just make it easy on us, the people will serve you. Well, Rehoboam said to them, said, let me, give me three days and I'll come back and talk to you. He went and sit down and had counsel with the young men. The young men said, well, you tell them that your father ruled with a little finger as compared to what I'm going to do. Your, my father whip you with, with, with a whip, but I'm going to use a scarping. Now, the scarping was the whip that had uh, the, the bones and stuff in it that would take the skin off your back. So that reminded them of, of what their four pounds had told them about Egypt. And so they, then what happened, 10 tribes out of to 12 tribes of Israel, 10 of them rejected him and said, no, we, 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 we're not going to have that. We're not going to do it. And so only two tribes went with uh, Rehoboam. And they, they were the tribe of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin. So he, he had split the church. 
And God thought that the church now, Israel, God had built, put Israel together and said to Israel, said, now, I, I, you're going to be an example to the whole world. They're going to see you and they're going to be, know that I'm your God and they're going to be, want to be like you. But now this split the church because 10 of them went with uh, uh, Jeroboam and only two stayed with Rehoboam. And so Rehoboam and uh, first of all, Jeroboam decided, said, wait a minute. The people that left me and I'm Solomon's, a real bunch of the people that left me and I'm Solomon's son, said that, that's not going to happen. He got together and got ready for war. He wanted to go to war. But God sent a prophet to told him, said, don't do it. There's no time for war now. And the same with Jeroboam. Jeroboam was ready to take the, he put on the altar two, uh, 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 two things representing what real bond had, the two tribes. So we're going to go in and take it. And uh, God gave sent a prophet to him and told him, don't do it. See, it's bad when you start fighting among yourself. When you have a family fight, nobody wins. What did I say? When you have a family fight, nobody wins. And, and so they, 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 he did the wrong thing. He took counsel with the young men and lost out. Now, when we look at this then, uh, there was a numerous of sin that Solomon did. And, and it caused bitterness. It caused hurt. It caused people to hate him. It's, they even hated uh, his son uh, because Reuben was telling them what he was going to do. I'm going to make it harder. So if anybody tells you they're going to make it harder, it's hurt you. You already been going through and somebody tell you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, it's going to be worse. Uh, it's going to be worse. You, you, just, you think my father did you bad. Wait until I get in. So he answered them roughly. Answered them roughly. Now, uh, let me tell you something. Never answer people roughly Amen. that is willing to work with you. If folks are willing to work with you, you should be kind to those people. Be nice to those folks. But don't answer people roughly and they are willing to work with you. They were willing to help him. But his, his selfness, selfishness caused him to lose out. Now, it, God already knew it was going to happen. He knew it was going to happen. And so the people openly rebelled against him. And you know how long this rebellion lasted? 260 years. 260 years before God brought them back together. Now, God's plan for Israel was to be a nation that other, other people would look upon and they would come to God. But now this nation is halted because they see God's chosen people fighting among themselves. Do you realize the danger it is when the church fights among themselves? When the church people are fighting and people see the church fighting and there's a lot of time churches are fighting inside and an inside job in the church. Here's what you got to understand. This is church history and history always repeats itself. But he that forget history also forgets about what's going to happen. It's destined to repeat it. If you forget it, you're destined to repeat it. History tells us you can never win fighting a church within. You'll never win. Now, you will split the church, but you don't win. You don't win because what happens if you split a church, somebody's going to split you. Going to split what you split, and then somebody's going to keep on splitting, splitting, because the spirit of abuse continued to abuse. That's the spirit of abuse. It continued to abuse. You wonder why a person that's been raped, or robbed, or killed, or hurt, their family been hurt, or they've been molested, why would they rob or rape somebody? Because that spirit that molested, that did it to them, it passed on to them. And they have the spirit of molesting, and like they heard it and so forth, they pass it on. So unless that curse is broken, that person is going to be a molester, a raper, or a robber. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. It's the same thing. Why would you see a person that is addicted to cocaine, and the children see them addicted, see all the stuff that they do, and say they'll never do it. But 90% of the time, they will come, become addicted to, or one of them will become just like the dad or mom, because that spirit of addiction. It's a spirit of addiction. I do not believe that anybody is born with alternative lifestyle. But I do believe that there are spirit that possesses them, that was opened up before them, that possesses these babies, and you can see it on them. And instead of the parents praying them off, they, they submit and go into that. Y'all ain't going to talk to me, but I understand. But I'm trying to help somebody. So, so even though they was, that God separated them, uh, Israel and, and Judah, uh, they still stayed close to David teaching. Now, Jeroboam uh, became king over Israel. And, 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 and uh, he had a tribe uh, over Israel. Jeroboam was over uh, uh, 12, uh, 10 tribes. Then 
uh, you had the uh, uh, real bond that was only over two tribes. So that was a conflict. That was a conflict. Now, even if you are chosen by God to lead uh, his people, then uh, if you don't listen to God and go the wrong way, God will get you. He will get you. You, you. you got to take the advice from God, and you got to act on what, what God will is and, and, and remove yourself from being, listen to this group and that group. In the, as a pastor, you have two ears. You have an ear that people telling you stuff on this side, and then people telling you stuff on that side. Some of the best, but the best information I can give you, if you ever become a pastor of a leader, let both, let your ears be open that the stuff go out of both of them, in this one and out, in this one and out. Because any of it that stops, sometimes going to hurt you. And have your heart open to God. Your heart open to God. Because let me tell you something. If, you, if, if, if there's a group on the right can get you here, and there's a group on the left can get you here, you got a division. So you have to hear the word of God. And your ears must be open to the word of God. Now, examples of the prophets listening to uh, 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 a line, uh, uh, a line prophet. He was killed by a lion. God told, sent this prophet to Cherubon, and he told him to listen. Said uh, that there should not be a war between you and and, and 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 your brother Israel. Don't do it. Don't fight against them. And so he told him not to do it. Now, what happened when he told him not to do it? Uh, he said to the prophet, said, don't eat nothing in the, in the city. Don't take no water. Don't take nothing from nobody. So you go and tell them what to do and get out of there. So he went and told him what to do. And on his way back, an old prophet, his son was at the meeting. And an old prophet, be careful for these old lying prophets. You have a lot of them. Lying prophet. That, well, son, you know this and that. And I've been in the church this long and da, 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 da. You know, you better be careful and watch out for him. So he said, his son came back and told him what the prophet had said. This old man told him to sell me an ass. And he sold him an ass and he went cut this young man off. And he said to him, he said, I'm a prophet too. He said, I know the Lord told you not to eat anything or drink anything in this city. He said, but I'm a prophet too. And he told you to come by my house and eat. But this young prophet, not Listening to what God had told him, he went by this man's house and ate. And the moment he did it, again, there was a lying spirit. And the moment he did it, then God said to him, said, you're going to die. I told you not to do it. And on his way out, the Bible said that he was attacked by a lion and killed because he listened to this lying prophet. And I wonder how many people that had lost their lie today because they listened to some lying prophet. I need some help. So who are you going to rely on? Now, Jeroboam uh, did not do what God told him to do. And his son got sick. And remember now, Jeroboam had the 10 tribes. He had the 10 tribes. And Rehoboam only had two. Now, Jeroboam's son got sick. Jeroboam had over 400 some prophets. I mean, a, a, a priest. He made priests of just anybody. He just put them in, just put them in whatever area. And, 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 and this is another problem that Rehoboam had. Rehoboam did the same thing because what they did not want, if you have a family feud, you got cousin on this side and cousin on that side. So you don't want the cousin on your side to go visit the cousin on the other side. They was all Israelites from different tribes. Do y'all understand? So what he did, he put priests all around so that they would not have to walk, go over back to Israel, and then the other one did the same thing. That was just pleasing to God. Oh, yeah. And they put priests in of the low class. In other words, they made them priests of their own. It's bad for you to make your own God. So Jeroboam's son became sick, and, and he had his wife to disguise herself and go to a uh, Shiloh and bring back uh, Ahijah, which was a priest, uh, to, to, to pray for his son. Now, isn't it strange that when, when you got 400 and some priests yourself, you send over to another nation to bring back somebody else to pray for you? I need some help, Holy Ghost. Now, 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 now. So he, he, he didn't have confidence in any of those he had. He knew they wasn't any good. He knew they wasn't any good. So he, he, he put his wife in disguise. But there's one thing about the real man of God, a woman of God, is that God told, uh, uh, he told Ahijah before he got there, he said, she's coming, he's sending his wife. 
and she's in disguise. So now I want you to tell her when she come in, let her know that you know him. You see, you can't hide before God. Look at somebody and say, I don't care what disguise you put on. God know you. you change your hair, do it, change everything you want to and put on what you want to and go to a bar. God still know you in there. So his wife got there in a disguise. She disguised herself and she lied to the man of God. And God revealed his plan to Ahijah before she got there. Because of the wickedness. This is what he told him. He said, you tell Jeroboam. Because of the wickedness that he have done, he told his wife the 10 things that God was going to bring upon Jeroboam. He's going to bring this upon Jeroboam because Jeroboam did this wicked thing towards God. Number one, envy in his kingdom. The people that said, hell the king, they're going to envy you now. A lot of folks that you think is with you. If you do wrong, God can turn those same folks against you. He told him number two, say he's going to afflict the males in your house. All those strong people you think you got surrounded with them, he's going to afflict them. Number three, he was going to uh, shout, he was going to shorten his generation. Your generation will not come after you. It's going to be short. I need some help, Holy Ghost. Then he told him uh, that the fourth thing that I'm going to do, that, that when you die, the dogs is going to eat those that die in the city. And the birds are going to eat those that die in the, in, the, in, the, in the field. Then the fifth thing he told his wife, said when your feet enter into the city, your son is going to die. The moment you get back, he's going to die. Number six, he said all Israel will mourn for him, but only, number seven, but only the house of Jeroboam, Jeroboam will come out. Only his family is going to come out, but the whole city is going to mourn him. Number seven, he told him that, well, number eight, he told them that uh, uh, God was going to raise up a king for Israel. And number nine, God was going to smit Israel. And number 10, he was going to move Israel out of his good land and scatter them throughout the universe, throughout the nation. So let me tell you something. When you think you have it easy and things are going right and you all disobey God, this is what sometimes happened in our society. Some people that was little in their own sight, when they didn't have the cars, when they didn't have money in the bank, when they didn't have the clothes, when they wasn't wearing brand name clothes, when they were just bearing, wearing secondhand clothes and buying stuff out of, I know what I'm talking about, buying stuff out of, uh, 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 of, of Salvation Army and, and Value Village and all of those places. You were small in your own sight. Nobody didn't have to tell you that you was nothing. You already knew it. You felt it. I, 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 have you ever, anybody in here beside me know when you didn't have anything? You couldn't plan your meal for a whole week. You couldn't make out a schedule what you're going to eat for a whole week. The whole thing you was hoping that you could eat for the whole week. When you were little in your own sight. Little in your own sight. You was just glad. To, you see, we were just glad to, to be eating. We didn't eat bacon and eggs uh, for breakfast. We ate whatever they put. We was glad to get rice for breakfast. We didn't have grits. We ate rice. We ate whatever was put before us. We was glad. There was no such thing as what we call quote unquote breakfast food. It was just being a blessed to have food. So when you was living in your own sight, you did what God said. But the moment that God elevated you, then you got high minded and began to look down at folks and, and do things. This is what happened with, Re with, with Rehoban. Uh, uh, he served 18 years and God removed him. He died and there was a war between Rehoban and Jeroboam all the days of their life. They never got together. They always fought against each other. And even when you're going to see when they came together, they still didn't trust each other. After Rehoban died, uh, after he died, uh, Judah then that which was, did that which was evil. And they were still doing that, and they provoked God. And they provoked God to jealousy, and they served other God. And after they served other God, there was a war between Judah and Egypt. And they took all the gold that they had in the temple. Watch this. Now, Judah, between Judah and Egypt, Egypt took all the gold, all their gold out of the temple, all the gold swords, all the gold shield. And guess what happened? The king replaced it with brass, polished brass. Polished brass looked like gold, but it's not gold. 
And this is what happened when praise and worship goes out of the church. The devil replaced it with polished brass. It's not the real thing, but it's just a substitute that looked like it's the real thing. And we gotten so used to polished brass that we don't even know what gold looked like. God, I need some help. Polished brass, that's what he did. He took the, they stole the gold out. Do you understand the devil have stole our praises? have stole our songs, yeah. making some of the songs that was really, really songs that we meditated on, making those songs a part of the world. Yeah. The world has put a little hip hop into it. And you're singing a hip hop song. That's what it means, polished brass. Yeah. Right. Then Abijah reigned over Judah for three years. And this guy uh, was a priest, but he reigned over him for three years. And, 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 and there was war between him and Israel, and he defeated Rehoboam. Now, Abijah was praying, and he grew mightily in the Lord. But he married, he had 14 wives. He begotten uh, 22 sons and 16 daughters, and, and, and he died. So you can see what killed him, but uh, he died. And his son reigned in his stead. Jesus Christ, yeah. And the son reigned in the stead. Asa, Asa reigned in the stead. Now, watch what happened. Uh, uh, Asa reigned in the stead. Now, and for 10 years, there was no war. Asa did that which was right in the God's sight. When you do what's right in God's sight, God will protect you. When you rely on God, God will protect you. And I wonder how many have forgotten how they used to rely on God. How many have forgotten that you would wake up in the morning praying on your knees when you got out of the bed and the last thing you did before you went to bed was on your knees. How many have forgotten that you blessed your food before you would eat? How many have forgotten that you would pray for your children before they went to school? How many have forgotten about how you cared about your family? How many have forgotten how our family was the continent, was the thing that we, we, we wanted to eat with them? We wanted to be with them. How many of us have forgotten? And now we eat in a different room. We eat at a different time. We don't care about the children. They come in. The children fix their own stuff. Most of the time it's snap, crackle, and pop. And that's why they're snapping, cracking, and pop. Because that's all they have, snap, crackles, and pop. Snap at you. Pop off at you. Y'all y'all, y'all, y'all. And for 10 years, there was no war. Asa did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Now, he returned to the, the children of Judah back to seeking God and his law. And he took away most of the high places and the idol God. Now, here's something else he did. He, 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 he brought in some of the good teachers of teaching the law. Teaching them the law. He taught, he brought the priests back. He brought in the Levite. He brought in the, the scholars to teach the law to the Judah. He brought in so many of the fine teachers and said some of the, the, the tribe of Israel was coming over to hear the teaching. Yeah. To hear the teaching. Do you know if you teach God's word and you get God God's word properly, properly in your heart, and you tell enough for other people to come in. Other people to come in to hear God's word. Yeah. So that's what that's what Asa did. Now watch this. Now uh, 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 after Asa had brought that in, they had no war for 10 years, uh, he returned the children of, of Judah back to seeking God and his law, and he took away most of the high places and the idol God. The Ethiopian came out against him, and he sought God, and Judah defeated him. Now, remember, Judah was only two tribes, and the Ethiopian came out against him, and he sought God. He prayed to God, and God allowed that little Judah to defeat him. And there were no wars until 35 years after this. Now, Asa was so strict about serving God that when he found out that his mother-in-law had brought in a false god in her palace, he put her out. He put her out. Now, now, now that's, that's what I'm going to tell you. He had her removed from the palace. Now, many from Israel came and joined Judah. But after 35 years of peace, ben Shah ben became king of Israel. Now, Baalshah, that's actually his name. Baalshah became king of Israel. And he came against Judah and surrounded Judah. And he took gold out. And, and when he surrounded Judah, now watch this. Asa, king of, of Judah, had been serving God. And for 35 years, there was no war because he depended on God. Yes. Now, the king Baasha of Israel surrounded him. 
Remember, they had war all the time. Surrounded him. Instead of Asa asking God to deliver them, he went and took gold out of the church and gold out of the palace and paid the Syrians to fight for him. And the Syrian went down and broke their alliance with Israel for money and they defeated them. And Asa thought that was all right. But the prophet and the man of God came to Asa and said to him, Asa, 35 years, there have been no war. When you fought the Ethiopians, didn't I, you sought me, didn't I defeat them? You defeat them. Why would you pay a heathen nation? Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Why would you pay a heathen nation that don't even believe in me? Why would you pay them to go against your brothers instead of coming to me? He said, from henceforth, you should have wars. The rest of your servant, your servant or king, you're going to have wars because you fail to recognize and depend on me. Who are you relying on? Do you rely on God when things are just small? But if it comes something big, you forget about God that brought you out. And you rely on man. Something happened to Asa because Asa did not rely on God. Then the Bible said that Asa uh, got sick. He had problems in his feet. One of the scriptures said it was gout. And he couldn't walk. Again, instead of asking God to heal him, Asa called in the physician. And the Bible said that he died. Because he did not seek God. There's something God would let us live with if we would seek him. That's why he says, seek ye first of what? And his and all of these things should be what? So we need, I don't care if we don't get healed, we ought to seek God. I don't care if it don't, 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 if it don't, when you pray, it don't seem like it made a difference, you ought to still seek God. I don't care if the people say you're crazy, still seek God. In all of our ways, acknowledge him. And Asa didn't pray. He didn't seek God. And the Bible said he died. Hippie said he died. And then when he died, then God brought in Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat reigned in his stead. And he did that which was good in the sight of God. He took all of the false gods that had, his father had allowed to come back. 